It doesn't matter where your brain comes from. It doesn't matter where you were born, how much money you have, what age you are. As long as you have a brain, the brain works on the same common operating system. Hi guys, this is Linda from Brain Education. If this is your first time, welcome! Please consider subscribing, like this video, and click the bell for notifications of each new episode. In this video, I'm going to talk about the five steps of the brain operating system. So what is the brain operating system? The brain operating system was created by the founder of Brain Education, Il Chili, and there are five rules that dictate how to use your brain to create the life that you want. Now there's a lot of complicated things out there that talk about brain in terms of science and, and spiritual practices and so many, many, many things and so many ways that we can complicate the brain. But what I really like about the brain operating system is that there are five rules that apply to anybody who has a brain, regardless of gender, regardless of age, regardless of any kind of different condition, religion. Uh, ethnicity, social class, all of these things, it doesn't matter. As long as you have a brain, these five rules apply to activate the innate potential of your brain. The brain operating system kind of works like this. Just like how your iPhone or your computer, your electronical devices have an operating system that kind of dictate what kind of apps and how that machine performs, your brain also has an operating system that helps it perform. So just like how your electronic device, it doesn't matter if you got your iPhone in Korea or the US or Japan or any country, as long as it's an iPhone, it works on the iPhone operating system. And same thing with Android, it doesn't matter which store or which country or how much you paid for it, that Android, as long as it's an Android, it works on an Android operating system. So just like this, it doesn't matter where your brain comes from, it doesn't matter where you were born, how much money you have, what age you are, as long as you have a brain, the brain works on the same common operating system. So let's talk a little bit about each of the five steps of the brain operating system. Number one, wake up and pay attention. Wake up and pay attention is number one because the first step to knowing how to use your brain is being awake. And I don't mean just physically awake, like my body is awake, I'm not sleeping. It means mentally awake, mentally alert, mentally aware of what is going on outside of you and also inside of you as well. Because a lot of people in this day and age were hyper aware of things that are going around outside of us, but we're really numb and oblivious to what's going on inside of us. And if we don't know what's going on inside of us, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, how can you fix or how can you manage, how can you control those things if you don't even know what's going on? So that's why the first step is to wake up. Wake up your brain and truly see what is going on. So some ways to practice wake up and pay attention can be meditation, it can be some reflections, it can be receiving feedback from somebody. Some kind of way for you to know what's going on inside of you is the first step to knowing how to use your brain. Number two. Good news makes a good brain. Good news makes a good brain is a very important one, especially right now. We love to see celebrity gossip and things that are juicy information because it's entertaining. And most of the time, juicy entertaining information is negative news. Something about a celebrity divorce, a breakup, or some kind of disaster that's in the media, some kind of war, some kind of famine, something sensational because it captures our attention. However, your brain, when you think of it in terms of a mechanism, when you feed your brain positive information, positive thoughts come out of your brain. When you feed negative information into your brain, negative thoughts come out of your brain. It's kind of like like A plus B equals C. Like if you put something in, something comes out. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter any kind of conditions outside of you. If you put in good, good comes out. If you put in bad, bad comes out. So take for example, let's say a child grows up in a very loving environment where their parents always told them compliments like you're great, you're awesome, I believe in you, I love you, you can do it. 
that kind of child will be very different as an adult compared to another child who their whole lives, their parents only told them bad information. Like, you're not good enough. I hate you. You're unlovable. You will never make it. I don't believe in you. If you grew up in that kind of family environment, you can already imagine what kind of adult that child would be like. So this is common sense to people, depending on what kind of family environment you grew up in, it determines your adulthood. So why does that work? It's because good news makes a good brain. And so I'm not saying that if you had a really bad childhood, then you're hopeless forever. That's not the case. Your brain is very malleable at any age. So at any point when you realize first, wake up what you're doing, Am I giving myself negative information or positive information? Wake up and then if you see you're giving yourself negative information, then change your habit to put in good information. I can do it. I love myself. I believe in myself. I can do this. All of these things to feed your brain good news, then a good brain will be created. And with a good brain, you can create a good life. Number three, choose it and it will happen. Choose it and it will happen is all about me being the master of my life. A lot of the times we feel like our lives are chosen for us. So for example, like uh, if someone does something to you, I feel like a victim and it's powerless and I feel like I have no control over this. So life just comes at me and I have no control. So if you have many experiences like this, it might seem like that life is something that you don't have a great hold of. But please remember, go back to rule number three, choose it and it will happen. If you believe in the law of attraction, that's what number three is all about. If you set your mind on something, something and you really, really, really want it desperately from your heart and you meditate about it, you pray about it, you gather all your sincere energy towards that goal, then the way energy works is that it gathers, 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 gathers until it materializes in real life. So the reason why people, even though you may practice law of attraction, you try to pray for, you try to pray for, and you say, please, 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 please. Some people might say, well, I've done that before and it doesn't work. The reason why it doesn't work is, is you didn't choose it enough. It might seem like you really, really wanted it, but if you're honest with yourself, which is bigger, your desire and belief that this will happen or your doubt about your effort. And you'll see if you're very, very honest with yourself that your doubt is bigger than your desire and focus and your choice. So if there's a goal that you want, if there's something that you want to obtain, something that you want to reach for, please choose it first and choose it, I wanna add a little bit more to this, choose it with pure intention. So don't choose it because, ooh, I want this person to like me and I want these things to happen. I wanna control and manipulate everything for my favor. Not with that kind of mindset. The universe loves harmony. So if your choice disrupts the harmonious balance of the universe, chances are you probably won't get it because the universe loves harmony. But if you really want something, that is harmonious with other people, that is truly pure and sincere in your desire, you keep choosing, 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 praying, meditating about this, then energy will gather with your pure and sincere mind. As energy gathers, then it will start to manifest in your life. Number four, be the master of time and space. Be the master of time and space means take charge of each and every moment of your life. Are you good at managing your time? Or do you feel like time kind of pushes you from the back and all of a sudden it's Monday and you don't even realize it and all of a sudden these things pop up and you feel like everything is kind of spilling through your fingertips? Time is energy. So if you manage time well, you are managing energy well too. Because time literally is the amount of life that you have. So if you're not a master of your time, for example, if you're someone who's always running late, or if you're someone who always misses deadlines, if you're someone who always seems like time is going by too fast, it means that you haven't mastered your use of your life energy. So be the master of time, first of all, means be the master of this life energy that is given to you. How can you truly be the owner of your life if 
time literally is all we have time is all we have and time is the core energy that drives our lives so if you don't have your time in order then your life is not in order as well and then space so be the master of time and space space means your environment if you're someone who feels like your environment is controlling you then you will always feel like a victim and you will always be at the whim of whatever circumstance is going on around you but if you're always at the whim of whatever circumstance is going around you, you will never truly feel satisfied with your life. You're just going to live passively. Okay, if this situation pulls me here, I'll go here. If this person tells me to go here, I'll go here. You'll live a very passive life and nobody wants to live a passive life. So rule number four, be the master of time and space just means truly become the owner of what is in your power. Time, your life energy that's flowing by, whether you can keep up or not time and space your environment number five design every circumstance design every circumstance means design every opportunity that you have in life this again is another reminder to not live your life passively not to let other people dictate what comes to you and what doesn't come to you, not letting other people dictate whether you're happy or not. It's how can I create, even if it's something that seems so unfavorable to you, even if it's like a business deal or a relationship that seems like you're always at the short end of the stick and it feels like you're at a huge disadvantage, there always is some way how I can flip this to my advantage. And now i say that very carefully because i don't want you guys to think like flip it to my advantage so i can screw over the other person and dominate and control it's not like this it's not like you're screwing over the other person so that you can win it's not about that it's if you feel like you're being victimized somehow if you feel kind of powerless and hopeless in this situation and you don't like it and you want to change it it's thinking how can i change whether it's something like my perception or my words or my behaviors or my my thoughts. How can I change something about this situation so that I don't feel so victimized anymore? I feel like the master of the situation. I feel like I'm in control of the situation. So a story I want to share with you, for those of you who have a little bit of a hard time understanding this, Il Chili, when he first came to the United States in 1996, he went to JFK with $5,000 in his pocket and he was robbed. He was robbed at the airport. So can you imagine that you're in a foreign country, this is all you have, you come here to spread good work and you get robbed of every single penny that you have, you'd be so darn frustrated, right? And you can agree with me that he was definitely in the short end of the stick in this situation. There's nothing in his favor that went right for him. But the only thing that he could change, he couldn't change the fact that he was robbed, they were already gone, they already took his money. The only thing that he could change was how he perceived the situation. So he was able to change this unfavorable situation of like getting robbed. He could have been like, oh my God, I've been robbed and I knew this was not a good idea. Like I should just go back to Korea. I should just stop. I should give up. He could have said that. It's, it, it's the easy thing to do. But what he did was he changed his perspective and he said, okay, I was robbed, but I'm going to think about it as a donation to the city of New York. I'm going to think of this as me contributing to the city of New York and in 10 years, I'm going to get it back hundredfold. So he changed his thinking that way. So this is what I'm talking about. Design every circumstance that even in such an unfavorable state, if you change your thinking, change your words, change your actions, change something that you have power over, your whole outlook on the situation will change. So it's not necessarily about the act itself that affects us but how we react and perceive that act that determines whether we're happy, sad, angry, lonely, depressed, etc, etc. So what do you guys think about the five steps of brain education? Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on any of them, if one of them stuck out to you, if you resonate with one more than the other, whatever it is, I'd love to hear it. So let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. I'll see you next time. Bye.